Hello people, welcome back to Neil's Not So Boring World of Chemistry, where today we're gonna take a look at science experiments. Now you don't have to be in a chemistry course, you could also be taking biology, physics, environmental science, any science class is gonna have you doing experiments and you're gonna be expected to know what the different parts or labels are in any science experiment setup. So things like control groups and constants and variables, independent and dependent, you're gonna to have to be familiar with those. And I know for a fact that when it comes to those variables, independent versus dependent, it's a problem area. So in this edition, that's what we're focusing on. We're gonna break down what the difference is between the two, how to pick them out of an experiment, and finally, how do we plot those on a standard graph? If that's what you're looking for, you found it, I'm here to help you and I can't wait to get started. What's up everybody? Welcome to Neil's not-so-boring world of chemistry. Let's go into the lab and take a deep look. When looking for variables in an experimental setup or description, it's best to actually remember what the word variable means. If we look at the word, we can see the root of it is vary, which of course means to change. So in science experiments, there's gonna be a lot of things that are not changing, a lot of things that are constant, but there will always be two standout features of the experiment that do change intentionally. Things we want to not stay the same. And those are gonna be our variables. But how do we differentiate between the independent and the dependent variable once we've identified the things that are gonna change? To understand the difference between independent and dependent variables, or the two things that change in an experiment, we should just really look at a simple experiment and start from there. So the experimental question that I'm investigating with this experiment is, how does changing the type of wax you use to make a candle affect the time it burns for? So again, how does changing what the candle is made of affect its burn time? Now, I'm choosing three different materials to make my candles out of. One is gonna be made out of beeswax, the second candle is going to be made of something different, what we would just call normal wax or paraffin. And the third candle is going to be made of a wax product that's derived from soy. So do you notice that the three candles are made up of different substances? I changed the type of candles I'm using in this experiment. Remember, to change is to vary. So this is a variable. The type of wax I'm using is one of the variables in this experiment. And because I've decided to change it, I have intentionally manipulated it. Before the experiment even starts, it's part of my plan to make sure the type of candle is changed. That makes it the independent variable. The independent variable is always the thing that's changing according to the scientist's intention, what they want to change, the way they're setting up the experiment such that that one thing is different amongst, in this case, the candles. So what would the dependent variable be? So if our independent variable is the material that we've chosen to use to make our candles, we decided we manipulated what these candles were gonna be made up of. What's our dependent variable? Well, let's remember our experimental question. We wanna know how burn time is affected by the composition of the candles. In other words, do candles burn faster or slower depending on what they're made of and which burns the fastest and which burns the slowest? So if you think about it, the burn time is also going to change. It's not gonna be the same. We can see here from my drawing that the beeswax candle seems to be burning much slower than the wax and the soy. So we would say that that burn time is our dependent variable. 
Now, how would we know how long it takes for these candles to burn? Well, we would have to take measurements. We have to use a stopwatch. We would be collecting data. Dependent variables are always the thing you're going to measure. In this experiment, it's the amount of time it takes to burn. In another experiment, it could be a mass measurement or a temperature measurement. Anytime you're measuring something, the data you're collecting, that's always going to be the dependent variable. Now we can put it into sentence form and connect the two ideas. The amount of time the candle burns for depends on the material it's made of. The dependent variable depends on what the independent variable is. So from this, you can see how we put those two ideas together. We've got our independent variable, which we choose, which we intentionally manipulate, and we've got the dependent variable, which is going to change based on which scenario we have, and we're going to be able to measure it, and it's going to generate data. Let's walk through another experimental design scenario to see if you're getting the hang of this. Now in this experimental design, the question is, how does the amount of water affect the ability of tomato plants to grow? How does the amount of water added affect how well tomato plants can grow? So my setup here is pretty simple. I have three pots of the same size. They contain the same type of soil, the same amount of soil, and each of them have about five tomato plant seeds in them. And all the seeds are exactly the same, the same breed of tomato plant, if you will. So it looks like everything is the same, with one exception. I've decided to manipulate the amount of water I'm going to add. In this setup, I'm only going to water the plant once a day. In my second experimental setup, I'm going to water the plant twice a day. And in the third setup, I'm going to water it three times a day. Now I'm going to make sure I use the same type of water and I'm going to increase the amount of water um, in equal volumes. In other words, if I give this plant, I don't know, 30 mLs of water, I'll give this plant 60 and I'll give this plant 90. So I'll try to make it all sort of equal and balanced. So what's the independent variable in this scenario? Take a second, think about it, pause the video if you need to, and let's see if our answers match. The independent variable, remember, that's the thing me, the scientist, the botanist in this case perhaps, is choosing to manipulate. I've chosen to manipulate the amount of water. The amount of water is varying. It's certainly a variable, right? And because I'm choosing how much water I'm going to add, that makes it the independent variable in this experiment. Now let's think about the dependent variable. Let's revisit our research question. We asked, how does the amount of water affect the growth of tomato plants? How does the effect of the amount of water you give a plant on a daily basis impact its ability to grow? Now we've already determined that the thing we've manipulated intentionally is the amount of water. We've decided when we're gonna add the water and how much of it we're gonna add and we want it to change from plant to plant. What's our dependent variable? Ask yourself the question, what would you measure in this experiment once you get it going? Well, on a daily basis, you might wake up and measure the height of the plants. That would give you some data. Maybe you're gonna measure the height in centimeters. You might also measure the tomato production. How many tomatoes are growing on these plants, right? And that would give you another piece of data. So because we're measuring these things, the growth of the plant, that's the dependent variable. We want to know whether or not that depends on the amount of water which we changed intentionally. Okay, but there's still one thing we have to address in this lesson. After we set up our experiment and we determine our independent variable and we take our measurements, whether it's how fast the candle burns or how well the tomato plant grows, how do we put that into a graph? Which variable goes on which axis? That's in the next segment. So in an effort to make this whole concept easier for you to remember, 
we're going to use a mnemonic device that was once taught to me. It's dry mix, dry mix, and it stands for dependent response y axis. So our dependent variable is always the thing that responds to the change we made intentionally, the thing we manipulated. So in our examples, right, the dependent variable was like the melting time of the candle or the growth of the plant. And those are always going to go on the y-axis of the graph. So the y-axis is the vertical plane of our graph. Now mix stands for manipulated is independent, and that's going to go on the x-axis. So our independent variable is the thing that we manipulate, the type of candle we're using, the amount of water we're adding to the tomato plant, and we're always going to plot that on the x-axis of our graph. So let's take the two experiments we used, the candle experiment and the tomato plant experiment, and let's actually put those different variables on their appropriate location on a traditional graph. Beginning with our candle experiment, we would want to put the burn time, which is our dependent variable, on the y-axis. And notice that because it's a measurement, I would want to put the units of measurement in parentheses. In this case, it would probably be hours. On the other hand, my independent variable, the thing I manipulated, was the type of candle, and that's going to go on the x-axis. Okay, now let's look at the tomato plant setup. In this experiment, we said the dependent variable was the height of the plant, and so that's going to go on the y-axis, and we're going to have the units of measurement, which would likely be centimeters in parentheses. On the other hand, the independent variable that we chose and manipulated was the amount of water that was added. It would be reasonable to think that that would be measured in milliliters, so we have the unit there. All right, if you understood this video, you should be equipped and ready to answer some practice questions, so let's get into it. Before we take a look at some practice questions together, let's review the mnemonic device that was introduced to help you differentiate between dependent and independent variables, and that is dry mix. Dry stands for dependent response y-axis. The dependent variable is the thing that we're measuring, and we're expecting it to respond to the thing that we've changed intentionally, which is our independent variable. To change means to manipulate. The independent variable is manipulated or changed by the experimenter. Remember that the dependent variable will always be plotted on the y-axis of your graph, while the independent goes on the x-axis. Okay, our first practice problem describes an experiment that's conducted to explore the impact of protein supplements on sleep quality. Five different brands of protein powder are used, and the quality of sleep of the participants is determined or measured using a sleep tracker on their Apple Watches. What are the independent and dependent variables in this experiment? Why don't you pause the video here and come up with an answer and then return to see the solution. Okay, I hope you said that the independent variable was the type of protein. This is because the experimenter or scientist manipulated the type of protein that would be given to the participants. Now, what happened in response to that? Well, they're looking for a change in sleep quality. This would be the dependent variable. Okay, in our second practice problem, we have a botanist who wants to investigate the effect of different colors of light on the growth of mold. She uses five mold samples of the same species, which are all approximately the same age and size. She places one of the molds in white light, another one in blue light, a third in green light, a fourth in red light, and finally, one mold sample is in complete darkness. After two weeks, this plant scientist observes the molds and takes growth measurements. When she plots her findings on a graph, what should she put on the x-axis? Think it over and come back for the answer. Well, as we know, the x-axis is always going to be where we put our independent variable. In other words, the thing that the experimenter or scientist is intentionally changing or manipulating. In this experiment, that would be the type of light. The type of light is going to be changed, and the growth patterns are going to be measured to see if there's some sort of response to that independent variable. That's going to conclude this video, everyone. 
Thank you for watching, and I do appreciate all the ways in which you support the channel, like commenting, liking the videos, and subscribing. I'll see you in the next edition.